Hello you guys, welcome back to Channel Claire. It's been a moment, I hope that you're well, staying safe, staying healthy, all those good things. I'm trying to keep myself in that same realm. Um, just working a lot, looking at apartments, doing that whole thing. I have two apartments I'm going to look at this weekend. My goal is still April, but to move out into my own place. However, every time I talk to somebody, they're like, just stay, stay at home, stay at home, save as much as you can, save, save as much as you can. I had a goal for myself to have by May and I'm pretty close to that goal. So I'm like, you know, I would feel like that would be enough. Like this lump sum that I've managed to save, which thank God I wouldn't have saved it without my mother giving me a place to stay, which, you know, she just she would you know I'll always have a place with my mother um <clears throat> but because of that I've been able to save and I'm so grateful but in my head this sounds it seems like a nice lump sum of money to start with you know and go on and do what I need to do but when I talk to other people they're like just stay at home stay at home just save just save and I'm just like but I need my own space, you know what I mean? And I'm sorry to start off off the bat, like just ranting about this stuff, but I need my own space, you know? My space to do things that I want to do, like record, like, you know, do my clay, do my jewelry, do my art, like where I'm not bothering nobody, I'm not having to worry about making a mess, I'm not having to worry about, you know, being too loud or feeling like, you know, being nervous to speak and like all these things. And I just feel like I'm in this in-between stage where I can't move forward and grow and do the things that I want that I know would, would help me because I'm still in this space. You know what I mean? And I feel like why prolong this like limbo stage that I'm in where I feel like I can't, you know what I mean? I don't know. So I'm like trying to take all of that in because like once I'm out, I want to stay out. I don't want it to be a situation where I have to crawl back home again. <laughs> um, like I just don't think that's a good look. So I'm just like thinking about a lot. I'm thinking about a lot. Like I definitely don't want to be house poor and everything out here is expensive. And you know, that's how it is. Like people we live paycheck to paycheck like that's just reality for a lot of people um if you aren't you are you know you're truly blessed um but a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck so it's just like you know people do it every day is this what I'm supposed to be doing too just like being able to get out and take care of myself and be self-sufficient so like so what if I have to wait on my next paycheck like people do it all the time like it's a part of life I guess it, but then it's also like people are like well why struggle if you don't have to and I get that as well and I'm just like I don't know I just want to prove to myself that I can take care of myself all by myself and I'm about to be 30 years old next month and I keep saying it because it's like giving me anxiety I'm gonna be 30 years 30 years old next month and um I'm like, oh my god, I have never taken care of myself in the true form, like, like taking care of myself in every, like, by myself, because even when I lived on my own, I was still living with my significant other, so we shared, like, the bills and everything like that, so I'm just really looking forward to doing that, and if you watched Real Housewives of Potomac reunion, which maybe you haven't, if, like, <laughs> You don't keep up with that, but I keep up with the housewives. So to hear Ashley say that by the time you're 30, you're supposed to have your name on a house. And I'm just like, girl, do you not know the times that we live in? There are so many people who still live with their parents. And like, that's not a bad thing. And you shouldn't shame people for not having their name on a house at the age of 30. And the fact that she said that. And she still does not have her name on the house at over 30. It was like such delusion for her to like make a statement like that. And it just like irked my nerves when I heard it because I was like, how dare you? How dare you? How many people are watching this right now who live in their parents' home? Who have had to go back home or like, and you've had to do it yourself. You couldn't afford the house that you have. And this is like real housewife tea. 
You couldn't have afforded the house that you have if you if it wasn't paid by your ex-husband, who is a complete creep, via an L LLC. That doesn't even fucking make sense. It doesn't make sense. So he has all types of control over you. He can show up at the house whenever he wants to, has a key, yet you want to say that people at the age of 30 should be have their name on their own house by themselves. Like, it's just... So I'm just like, girl, like, come back down to earth. Like, if you watch Real Housewives of Potomac, let me know if you peeped that comment. Let me know any of your thoughts about the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion because it was, it was like that. And I'm very much looking forward to this Sunday um, because I was like, ooh, like, what the hell? Um, it, it was hot. It, it was a good episode. Like, all the ladies brought it, Candace in particular, like, Candace gets mixed views, but her mouth is just like, you know how there's like people who are super effing witty and they just have a comeback. And like it doesn't take them long. Like I'm so not like that. And I wish I had that wit and that like I that comeback game that I could just like someone says some bullshit. I could just like come back at them real quick. But my ass always thinks of shit after the fact. I'm like, damn it, I should have said that when the whole situation is gone. Um but I admire people who have that wit and who ha are like wordsmiths and can like just pull shit out of their ass like at any given moment. I just, it's a talent. It's a talent. But something else that happened on Sunday was that um, I saw that Kate and William went to the BAFTAs. Um, I saw Kate, actually, let me pull it up. Because I think that she looked very nice. And I think that it was different from her, for her. And I think that it was like her trying to make herself more of a fashion icon you know um the silhouette and stuff is kind of the the same of which i've seen before but there were some parts that i was like oh, okay girl like what's going on here so we're gonna take a look at that um i also wanted to take a look at um i don't know if you guys saw that lily rose depp johnny's daughter did a profile with uh i believe it was id magazine and um she did a profile with them and the photos themselves were like risque. I mean, I know she's grown and everything like that, but they were very risque. There was a shot that I think she was paying homage to Kate Moss, who we know helped her dad out in the trial that he had last year and everything. Um, so I wanted to take a look at that. And I also saw... <laughs> that Megan and Hare are trying to sue South Park or something or that they're looking at it. I've seen reports that Megan is feeling like overwhelmed and upset about it and like I could imagine. I could imagine. Um, but when I was looking at comments on my last video people were like you know we are not going to feel bad for this girl like it's deserved. Like they did it to themselves this that, and other and like I see that. I do see that side of it. Don't get me wrong. I see that side of it, but then on the other side, I'm like, oh my god, like, if that was me, I would be on the effing floor. Um, so I know that, like, when she saw it, or saw clips of it, because I think that they're saying she's refusing to watch it, but I know that she's probably seen clips, or Harry's seen clips, and has relayed the message, um, I would just be so embarrassed. I would just be so embarrassed. So, um, we're gonna take a look at Kate. And William at the BAFTAs, they had a little cute moment, if you know what I'm talking about, kind of showing their love off a little bit, showing a little PDA. A lot of people say that, you know, they don't have that or they seem like they don't have as much of a connection or affection like um, Megan and Harry show where, you know, like they're always very close together, holding hands, like it's very much so like that. Versus William and Kate, they kind of like do their own thing. One will be over here, one will be over there. And like, but in this moment, it was a cute little moment. I was like, okay, girl. I just felt like she said, I'm going to come out at this. <laughs> I'm going to come out at this thing. I'm going to look good as shit. Especially after all this bullshit that's happened with you guys in um, South Park. Um, and I'm going to come out here. I'm going to look good as shit. And people are going to talk about how good I look versus talking about you being made to look on South Park. So um, we'll take a look at that. Um, I'm hoping that you guys can hear me. My mom is not home, so I'm talking <laughs> pretty loud and I have my mic up, but I am gonna check to make sure that everything is recording okay. 
So I will revise one of my last statements because I did just see this as I was scrolling on my timeline, but according to a source that spoke with Newsweek, Meghan and Harry found the speculation that they would sue South Park to be boring and baseless. Well, I mean, nobody would think that if that wasn't like kind of what y'all do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I feel so bad talking about this couple and I just... I just want so much better for them and now there's speculation about you know if they're going to the coronation or if they're not going to the coronation what it would mean if they don't what it what they would have to deal with if they do because let's let's be effing real they go to the coronation right my what I think should happen is that Harry should go to the coronation Megan should stay home with the kids that's I just think it would make things easier and make people more comfortable because at the end of the day Harry is family that's always gonna be his family at the end of the day da, da, da. Megan married into this family now there's all types of discord and mainly it's being pointed at her so I just think to alleviate the stress and anxiety to be put on a person if I were Megan I would be like I want no parts I'm not effing going I'm not fucking going so I can go out there and everybody boos me and I got fucking signs up and all the royal family is snubbing me and snickering behind like let me not even say that because people are gonna get mad I'm talking to the royal family but you know how people get like when someone walks in a room that is like you know and everybody starts getting quiet and looking around at each other and making little you know like just uncomfortable and then you can't control the crowd so like you know this is a full ass fucking event where they're going to be everywhere you can't control the crowd and what they're going to say what they're going to do it's unpredictable so they could be booing they could be like who it just ah if i were megan the anxiety that i would feel stepping into that situation just would not be worth it it just would not be worth it i would stay my ass at home with my kids now the issue is that the coronation is on archie's birthday so harry would miss archie's birthday i'm guessing but if they don't go and an invitation was given to them by the royal family then it's going to seem like they have snubbed the royal family yet again which is more backlash on them so it's like you go and you possibly get hounded and berated and jeered and booed at you don't go it's another mark against you as a snub <laughs> it's just like either way you're fucked so the best alternative is just to have harry go stay at home let him be with his family do his thing and then come back home to you and then complete your life out like whatever because how, uh, how often is the coronation going to happen? What other events are coming up other than that? Like, I don't know. But that would be it. Wash your hands of it and move on with your life. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm thinking about that. I just want to correct that because I saw it. Apparently, Megan and Harry think that it's baseless and boring for people to think that they would sue um, South Park. So, back to what I wanted to look at was Kate. Also, I didn't know that tickets for the concert for the coronation, it's like a ticket ballot. So you go ahead and you enter and that's how you get your tickets. I just saw this on the Royal Family website. So if anybody is wanting to go to the coronation concert, that's how you do it. It says there's just one week left to enter the ticket ballot for your chance to win. Well, for your chance to win, no. For your chance to attend the coronation concert at Windsor Castle. Find out more and enter here. It's a beautiful castle. I don't know if you guys see that. It's gorgeous. I'd love to go. Maybe shown a big screen at Hyde Park. That would be cool. trying to see anything about who might be performing but I don't see that yet but yeah all right anyway I keep getting distracted I wanted to see Miss Kate hold on 
Also, another sidetrack, we do have some new promo for Johnny's new movie, Jean Duberry. Very lovely. Very lovely. Cannot wait. I love a good period piece. He always does well in a period piece. Like, ugh. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. Why can I find... I keep getting distracted. Okay, here we go. So, Kate was wearing Alexander McQueen, as she does... That's what she likes. Remember, she went to uh, Alexander McQueen, <laughs> the designers there, when the dresses were not up to par uh, at Megan's wedding. She went to Alexander McQueen and asked about it. Um, so she was wearing a dress by Alexander McQueen, um, gloves by Cornelia James, clutch by Alexander McQueen, Aquazaro gold pumps, and earrings by Zara. Um, all rewears except the gloves, okay? So I'm telling you, these people got it like the pictures, the collages, like when she wore it before, when she wore it now. Like, so obviously, with the rewears, obviously, with the Zara earrings that apparently were $19, they're trying to show that they're like, you know, we're cost conscious, we're cost cautious royals like we don't we rewear our clothing, we spend not a lot on our money. Like, obviously, that's that um but as you can see Kate looks absolutely gorgeous she really does she looks pretty I love the white dress I love the one shoulder and I really like that first I was like oh I don't know about the black gloves but the more I look at it the more I like it so you can see they had the gold pumps there those are the earrings that she wore like very big statement earrings I don't think I've really seen her wear earrings that were like that you know big of a statement she has her hair down, flowing back off her shoulders, and the dress is just very pretty. And all of her um, outfits are so tailored to perfection. They just fit her body perfectly. They've got her clutch and the gloves. So I definitely think that this whole look here, yes, that was on purpose. That was on purpose. That's Kate stepping out and saying, I'm here, bitches. What are you going to say about it? I think she looked beautiful. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, that was her. But let's get to Lily. Okay, so Lily Rose. Lily Rose is, like, really making her name for herself. Like, I feel like she's kind of, like, she's a person who's not very, like, out there. We don't see her in a lot of pictures. Like, it's, she stays to herself. She stays out the drama. She doesn't, and I respect that. Be rich. Be pretty and staying out the drama that's how the fuck I do it but she did a profile with ID this is the cover again all of the pictures are very risque minimal clothing very grown how old is she I don't even know how old she is how old is Lily Rose Depp I'm sure Johnny was like, oh, okay, but her mom maybe has done shots, you know, in similar styles and stuff like that. So I'm sure she's gotten advice from her mom and her dad. And But at the end of the day, she's her own person. She's her own woman. Do what it is that you want to do. I am by no means shaming her at all. I think she looks great in all the shots. Um, so I'm going to put that off. Like, I'm no, I'm no way shaming her at all. I think all the shots are great. So, apparently, she is 23 years old. I didn't know that. <clears throat> so, this is the cover, as you can see. Um, very risque. But I want to get to the article. All right. So, this is the timeless issue. And, oh, did they take it? No, here it is. I thought they put it behind a paywall at first. Okay. So what's interesting about this is that it's not behind a paywall to read, which I think is great. Um, this is in their spring 2023 issue, the timeless issue, number 371. Um, so they are doing a profile on Miss Depp. So just going through the pictures at first, we have her here in like an oversized trouser pantsuit, draws top very cute very moody look at the face <laughs> she looks so much like her mom a good mixture of her mom and her dad actually um we then get this other picture here very simple fresh faced 
and we get this picture here that goes into the black is like kind of direct contrast from the picture before and we get her here reminds me of Kate Moss ish but this isn't even the one that I was saying that pays homage to her um this is the one and like I don't know about YouTube terms, but like, you know the picture of Kate Moss where she's in the dress. She's at like some party or something. She's in this really sheer dress. Um, and you just see that she has her panties and like nothing else. I didn't know that she didn't know that the dress, apparently the dress wasn't that sheer, but the cameras, when the flash went out, that's how it came out and was like an iconic picture. I know that you've seen it. So... This is literally kind of paying homage to that. I'm going to do a quick on that one. Another picture kind of paying homage. Um, got another one there. So very moody. Very in your face. Very grown up. There's quite a few pictures. You get the point. Um... So let's go to what the article says and what Lily has to say, all right? One moment. So I like the way that they started this out. Um, it says, there is nothing so gratifying as meeting a creative person right as they're hitting their stride. At that special moment in an artist's life when the constellations are aligned and they are riding high, full of inspiration and purpose, a sense that comes from some very good things being right around the bend. That's exactly what's happening in the world of Lily Rose Depp. So basically saying she's this up and coming star. She has all this stuff coming together. She's going to be doing this. She's going to be doing that. So like watch out for her. Um, they leaked up over Zoom on a Thursday afternoon. Very much enthusiastic Lily Rose showed up. She's been publicly known since she was born due to her incredibly famous parents. Um, she's going to be starring in her, the upcoming HBO series, The Idol, which I saw, I want to say like last year, I saw a lot of promo and pics about it and whatnot. And then like, it kind of like fell off and I didn't see anything about it. And I still haven't really seen much else about it, but apparently this is a series that is up and coming and it's created by Euphoria's Sam Levinson. I didn't know that. And I did know The Weeknd was involved in it, though. Um, so she's going to be doing that. She'll be filming Robert Eggers' Nefer Nefertito. Nefer Is that the vampire? Nosferatu? Isn't that the vampire? Or maybe I'm not. Um, as well as The Governess, a film being produced by A24. The Governess, that, probably, that sounds like a period piece. Love period pieces. Um, films like... Um, and then, yeah, so she's working on some films, which is really good. Really, really good. She feels like she's found her place in projects that she feels are really right for her. And that's what, like, <clears throat> I don't know if y'all remember, like, last year, there was a very, there was a huge discuss discussion on, like, nepotism and nepotism babies and what that means and their advantages and their privilege and this, that, and other. And Lily was, I feel like, someone who kind of started that discussion because she came out in an article pretty much saying, you know, she's where she's at based off of her talent, this, that, and other. She doesn't think it has to do with her parentage and this, that, and other. And people are like, what? Um, and I'm on the side of, like, I definitely think that, <laughs> you know, you get certain perks and privileges when your family are already in the industry. Like, come the fuck on. Um, so I didn't really like that, but whatever. She's young. She'll get it at some point. And, but for her to say right here that she's been able to find places and projects that are truly right for her, a lot of up-and-coming actors... Um, artists, they don't have that luxury to just pick things that really speak to them or like are especially right for them. They're, no, they're just trying to get work. They're trying to get their name and face out there. They're just trying to work to survive to get to the next thing, you know? So like that in itself is a privilege, you know what I mean? Um, so she's not able to reveal much about the idol yet except she's almost overwhelmed with happiness about it and as she plays jo jocelyn an aspiring pop star 
um, navigating sex, drugs, and rock and roll of the modern music industry. It sounds like something I'd really like. Um, she says, I've dreamt of roles like this for forever. I just don't think you could give an actress a greater gift than a role like this, she beams. This has been the most meaningful, important project that I've ever done. After a year living with the character, I'm still obsessed with her. I just want to keep digging deeper. So we're going to be watching out for the idol. What else is going on? She says she was inspired by Britney and Beyonce's of the world to bring out her inner pop star, of course. She thought of movie stars like Lauren Bacall and Jean Tonieri. They didn't walk into a room and descend to anybody else's level to try to make them feel comfortable. They almost had this confidence in the discomfort that they could provoke in people. A thing of, this is who I am and I'm not going to change. Which is something that I really want to evoke in life. Like when you, there are certain people who like walk in the room and they stop everything. Like people turn and look, they turn to stare and everybody's like, who's that? Like, it is just an air about them. That they're the fucking shit and they know it, you know? Like I've always dreamt of having that type of confidence. Now there is a certain point of like going over to like being self-involved, arrogant and just like a bitch. But like that confidence, the air of confidence in knowing that, like she just said, like, this is who I am and I'm not going to change. I'm not going to lower myself to meet you where you're at. Like, I'm not going to fucking do it. So I definitely love that. And playing a character like Jocelyn, I feel like could definitely bring that out of you. And it's something that you could carry throughout your life. So I think that's very interesting for her to have shared. Um... What else? Oh, the weekend plays her love interest. I didn't know that. She trusted him and was comfortable with him. They had to be in a lot of vulnerable places with each other. She says Abel was the best partner. Abel is the, the weekend's real name. Abel was the best partner that I could have ever asked for. He has my back and I have his. I just felt so free and liberated and so empowered. She so now they're talking about like her upbringing. She says that growing up between Paris and Los Angeles. Oh my God imagine that being your life like you grew up between Paris because your mom's over here and is a great pop star over in Paris and your dad's the biggest movie star over in the states and you're just going back and forth like the life the life goodness um she also understood from a young age in a way only the children of very famous people do the value of keeping your life private and she avoids controversy by veering away from any discussion too specific about her father or mother, which I think is smart. Um, just because she really has nothing to do with that. Like, she really doesn't. Like, that's not her shit. That's not her jam. Like, she has nothing to do about it, like, at all. So I respect that. Um, she does say, though, that growing up between Paris and Los Angeles, she has had the best kind of upbringing, I could imagine. My parents are artists, so I really always encourage I was really always encouraged to explore whatever I wanted to explore, which is another privilege because a lot of people don't get that. They got to get up, go to fucking work, <laughs> nine to five, sometimes even longer, come back home. You have those few hours for your fucking self until you got to get the fuck up and do that shit all over again. So there is some privilege in this and I don't know like if she when she's speaking and when she's telling these stories and stuff if she realizes it or if Johnny and Vanessa when those that article did come out and she was getting that backlash if they sat her down and like kind of talked about it. Um, what else? She was on sets at a young age, of course. She met Carl Lagerfeld the first time when she was eight with her mom. Can you imagine? The first time you meet Carl Lagerfeld is when you're eight years old with your mom. 
Wow. Wow. The life. She's only 23 in the life she's lived. <laughs> oh, God. They're kind of describing her personality, saying death is charming and sweet. If endearingly jittery, her presence in conversation, in contrast to the brashness of the idol, role the cool and sultry image she maintains in her Chanel campaign. She's a fast talker who restlessly puffs on a vape. Oh, she vapes. Um, and sometimes gets lost in her answers to questions. When I admit at one point that I was a journalist, I always get nervous before interviewing someone for a story like this. She confesses that she just gets as nervous being the subject of those interviews so we can be nervous together. So it seems like she's very personable. Love it. What else? This is very much all about her. Oh, she's talking about fame. She says that. <sighs> she finds fame strange and it can make her paranoid to the point where all the, she feels like all eyes are on her like a bad psychedelic trip. She says she can't smoke weed unless she's in her room. <laughs> Oh god, that must suck. Um, unless she's in her room. But like weed is legal in a lot of places. So like I don't think people would give a fuck if she was seen out smoking a fucking joint. Like I've seen her smoke cigarettes. I've seen pictures of her smoking cigarettes. I don't think anybody would care if they saw you bust out a joint or a blunt. Like I don't I don't think they would care. Um it fucks up from my head. I overthink it. Okay, so she overthinks it. I overthink it. If I leave my house and I look like shit and someone takes a photo, it's going to be like, oh my god, she looks like hell. She must be depressed. Now, that is one thing that I'm like, like, when you get up and go to the corner store, the corner store and the hair store see you at your fucking worst, okay? At your worst. You roll the fuck up and you're just like, take me as I am. Damn, my phone is about to die. Okay, so I got some juice and a little bit more. Um, so yes, getting up and going to the corner store, going to the hair store, you they see you at your absolute worst. So I could understand absolutely feeling like, God damn, every time I go out, you got paparazzi sitting on the corner just waiting for you. Just waiting for you. Like, you can't do shit. So that would irritate my soul. I definitely see that being a problem. Let's see what else she says. There are good and bad sides to everything, of course. She understands there is a hazard of her career. Um, she says she's aware that there's a discussion happening in pop culture at the moment about the children of very famous people, but she doesn't get too much caught up in that. Why did my... It just, like, skipped... That is so weird. Hold on. Okay. So she says she's aware that there's a discussion happening in pop culture at the moment about the children of very famous people, but she doesn't get too caught up in the sling and arrows of tweets in the clickbait. I wonder if she has social media like that or if she would even look at it or care. I mean, I feel like celebrities try to act like they don't look and they don't care, but you look like you're human. Like it's obvious that like it's just human nature to want to know what people think about you. So please, they look. Um... I feel my parents did the best job that they could by giving her a normal childhood. She feels like she had a normal childhood. Okay. Yeah, this is very much all about her. Like, they don't touch on Johnny at all. And I think that's good. Like, it's her moment and it's her time to shine. It's like, let her do her thing. And I'm sure both of her parents are very proud of her. Um... And I can't wait to watch The Idol. I'm going to watch. I'll give it a chance. It's going to be on HBO. So I didn't see a release date though. So I don't know. But that's all I've got for you guys today. It's been kind of slow in the news and everything like that. <clears throat> and I'm just living my life. Well, it's not really slow in the news. It's like if you want to really talk about trains derailing with hazardous 
shit on them like how often does that happen earthquakes in turkey more shootings i think i just saw about one in mardi gras university of michigan like random ufo sightings there was a lot going on but who wants to talk about all of that you know let's just <laughs> have it be all bright and sunny but other than that i hope that you guys have a great rest of your tuesday it's fat tuesday my aunt and um i guess my uncle yeah my uncle <laughs> um they are actually in mardi gras they left yesterday so they went down to new orleans and they're enjoying the festivities and that's why i was a little like nervous like i literally sent them what i sh you know saw about the shooting um I sent it to them and I was just like, you know, be safe, just be vigilant because shit happens. Um, but I hope that you guys have a great rest of your week and maybe I'll take you guys along with me this weekend when I go to look at the apartments, um, talk about the pricing in the DMV if anybody's thinking about moving out this way. Um, yeah, because I just hear it's high everywhere pretty much. But yeah, I'll see you guys a little bit later. Bye.